This week, St. Michael's College students and faculty got their first look at Richard Plum, selected uh, to become the 18th president of the Catholic Liberal Arts School in Colchester. Dr. Plum is 64, PhD, electrical engineering from Syracuse, who worked his way up the ladder of higher ed at colleges and universities from coast to coast. And he is with us this morning. Tell me a little bit about your story. Uh, you are a college president who was first in his family to go to college. Correct, thank you. Um, I grew up in uh, upstate New York, a small town called Liverpool, and um, I was being recruited to, uh, to row uh, at Syracuse University, so I went as an undeclared liberal arts major, not knowing what to study. I was not a very good high school student. And the first day on college campus, I was walking across the quad and a distinguished looking gentleman came up to me and started talking to me and said, you look like a first year student, son. I couldn't figure out how he knew I was a freshman. <laughs> but after being a professor for 30 years, I figured that out. He talked to me and said, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I want to study engineering, but I was told I wasn't smart enough um, and I'm being recruited by the crew team. So he took about 10 minutes to talk to me. And at the end of that conversation, he said, why don't you come back to my office? He was the associate dean for the College of Engineering. He transferred me to the School of Engineering that morning. Four years later, I graduated top of the class. Everything that I learned from sports, all the discipline, I applied to academics. And as I was studying, I loved helping my classmates. Um, they would come to me, how do you solve this particular problem? That led me to think, how can I stay in school the rest of my life? By my junior year, I figured that out, be a college professor. So that let me, led me to go on to becoming, uh, get a PhD and become a professor and then moving up through the academic ranks. So in a nutshell, that's my story of, of why, why I'm here. And, and how, did, how did Vermont enter the equation? Well, again, growing up in, uh, in Syracuse, New York, I backpacked the Adirondacks numerous times. Mm. Um, and I wanted to stay in a small Catholic liberal arts institution. Um, so when I saw this opportunity come up, I jumped at it because I knew a little bit about St. Mike's, but not, not a lot. Um, but being, a, being an academic for so many years, I heard about the school, know about its reputation, of what a fantastic job it does educating students and preparing them to go on and to help others in society was a perfect fit for the type of school I wanted to be at. He takes over a campus which in some ways is now at a crossroads. Ten years ago, St. Mike's enrolled more than 2,000 full-time undergraduate students. Today, it's down to 1,200, a 40% decline. Though many other schools around the Northeast report similar trends, as families question the price tag of a college education. All of which, he says, helps explain the high turnover we are now seeing among college presidents. Finances are difficult at many institutions, so there's a lot of pressures. So college presidencies really typically last now five, six years, where it used to be 10 years. So it's just the pressure of the job with all the demands on it um, that's causing turnover much more rapidly. Well, let's talk about uh, the challenges facing this school. Uh, we read about you know uh, the struggles with enrollment, um, mm -hmm. with annual deficits. Um, the balance sheet is probably top of mind for you. Uh, what, what did trustees give you as, as uh, what's on the to-do list? Well, I, I, I've got to tell you that the trustees were fantastic to interview with. They were very open. They were very candid with me. They did not hide anything. They did not sugarcoat anything. So clearly what is on the top of our mind is to rebuild the enrollment. Um, that I am very hopeful that we can do. So it's enrollment, philanthropy, uh, reconnecting with our donors, and again, telling the story um, part of what's going on is we need to do a better job of explaining why a St. Michael's education is so valuable. Uh, people will often describe it as a hidden gem. And there's an issue with a hidden gem. It's hidden and people don't know about it. We need to be a little more forthcoming. Um, still stay humble because uh, that's, that's the tradition of the institution. But tell the story of why St. Mike's matters for you your sons and daughters and how they will benefit their lives and their families' lives. Where do you think you can get enrollment uh, in the years ahead? Uh, St. Mike's is, is a regional school. Um, it's not known nationally. It's not going to draw 
from all 50 states, you know, like the big national schools, whether it's Notre Dame or MIT. So it's pretty much going to be the region, but we can also go out internationally. So we're going to have to build, rebuild that base. And from there, then in time, we can expand and go down maybe to the mid-Atlantic and go out to the Midwest a little bit more. But it's mostly going to be regional. But I mean, you have, um, it wasn't so long ago you had 2,000 undergraduates, and, and that number would look pretty good today. It would look great today, and, and my goal is to rebuild that enrollment. 2,000 might be a target? We'll see. Yeah. 2,000 would be fa a fantastic number. Uh, what about uh, uh, spending and, and your, your annual um, operating budget? Well, again, I was just appointed president, announced two weeks ago. This is my first day on campus, so I'm not quite prepared to go over what, what the budgets are and, and what that entails. I just have to learn a little bit more about the institution, and I need to talk to more people on campus. I really have only had the opportunity to talk to the trustees at this point. Um, what role do you think uh, athletics should or could play uh, for a, you're a Division II school? Um, you're a Purple Knight now. That, that's, a, that's a venerable name in this community. Athletics can play a, a vital role. Um, it, it certainly attracts students. There's no question about it. Um, athletics can be a draw, and it's a balance of what's the investment we make in athletics versus other areas of, of the institution. So it, there, there are trade-offs involved, but athletics plays a vital role. A number of our students come to St. Mike's to participate in D2 sports. And one of the great things about our student athletes is academically they're superior. Uh, they're one of the top performing institutions in Division II in the nation. And that's something to be incredibly proud of. Can St. Michael's sort of uh, be everything to everyone? Uh, it, it, do you think that, we, we've heard this from other uh, institutions that you know there may come a point where you you, you won't be able to offer a, a, as diverse, as broad an array right. of majors. That, that's a great question. That's something I'm going to explore yeah. um, with the community here. Um, I, I tend to believe it is difficult in today's environment to be everything for everybody. So what areas do we really want to focus in on? And that's something to explore with the community, to get their ideas and to see where their talents are and where we can make a distinctive mark to benefit our students and the Vermont community. So I, I read that while an electrical engineer, you also chaired a department that uh, included computer science. Correct. So you won't mind a question. Have you figured out this artificial intelligence thing yet? Artificial intelligence is, is <laughs> we are at the, the, the cusp. We are just at the beginning of what artificial intelligence is going to be able to do. As an engineer, um, what engineers do is we design technology based on the knowledge that's developed by the scientist to benefit people and society, the humanities, the social sciences, the natural sciences. All three of them are the liberal arts. So as an engineer, I need to know about the humanities, the social sciences, and the natural sciences. And as an engineer, I can say we are just, just at the beginning of this revolution, and it is going to totally revolutionize everything that we do. And we've got to get a handle on it. There's a lot of ethical questions that are going to be coming around AI. And a school like St. Mike's that focuses on morals and ethics can become a leader in how do we handle the societal impact of AI as it permeates everything that we do in our society. President Plum, uh Good to visit with you. Likewise. Thanks for the time. Thank you.